Hello, Warwick Brown from Account Manager Tips. I help organizations grow revenue, keep customers, and get things done. And we're gonna talk about all of that and so much more in today's interview. Welcome to Profile 3 TV, and today we're very excited to have a special guest with us today. So Warwick Brown, your Account Manager Tips, uh, and you're over from England to join us today, so very excited. I am. I am. So thank you very much for coming in and having a chat with us today. Thank you for having me. Excellent, delighted to be here. You would mind telling us a little bit about your background? I will, uh, Warwick Brown. So uh, my background is in corporate travel and um, helping businesses optimize their travel spend and get not only just what they spend it on it, but why they're spending it, why they're traveling. And so that's sort of my background. So um, currently um, I've got a business called Account Manager Tips, which is really about helping organizations optimize their account management or, and leverage their account management teams to drive revenue improve customer attention and get things done. So that's really what my focus is uh, today. And uh, yeah, great to be here and uh, talk a bit more with you. Excellent. So account management, so what, mm -hmm. why is that so important for businesses, the, the, the things not look after themselves, mm -hmm. I guess? Uh, no, they don't. Uh, interestingly, you know, sales is sexy. Mm -hmm. Sales is where, you know, it's the thrill of the chase, the, you know, the hunter versus the farmer mentality. Mm -hmm. And there's been uh, there's a lot of studies about you know the performance you know sales performance and what organisations the return on investment is mm -hmm. uh, on on um, you know uh, acquisition versus retention. Something like um, seventy percent of revenue comes from existing customers. Yet most businesses, you know, invest maybe 25-30% of their energy and their budget in securing those customers. Mm -hmm. You know, they spend all their time on retention uh, acquisition. I mean. And um, my, my sort of objective is really to, to advocate you know, the value of account management, which is really about optimizing your partnership with your client, or rather that your client optimizes their partnership with you, that they get the absolute best value from their partnership, and that you also co-create value. You have one eye on the future and about how you together can partner with your client to generate value and to lead them and uh, your organization and theirs you know, into into you know success. Incredible. And as you say that stat I wrote it down, seventy mm. percent. I actually don't know what our uh, percentages are, so I'm gonna to have to do some yeah, homework. Check it out. But I'm wondering again how many people watching this even are aware of that, that, that how much revenue is generated from existing clients compared to the, the new clients we're chasing to bring in. Yeah. My guess would be very few. And the thing is, a lot of times with account management, you're seeing you're, you know you're the you're that one to many relationship. So you're the the troubleshooter. You're the one that's uh, got to fix all the issues. You'll be involved in anything from invoicing to um, service failures to making sure you know you meet your commitments to contract management. And what a lot of organisations fail to do is invest in the strategic element of account management. So they sort of okay, the account manager's there to manage the relationship, fix problems, sort things out. Um, but are they really focused on account planning, about sort of white space analysis, where the opportunities are for you to um, link in your solution with um, the, the challenges that your client's having? You know, what, what are you doing about managing relationships? Something like, <clears throat> I think if you're under 34, you're going to change your job every two and a half years. So if your relationship is with one stakeholder, it's you know got a limited lifespan. You know, are you actually embedding yourself in the organisation? Are you tapping into the people that could benefit from your solution? And are you really close to their issues and their challenges? And that's the thing that that businesses don't tend to invest in, or could invest more in. Wow. <laughs> so <laughs> I like yeah, to think about. You get yeah, just um, yeah. Going, oh my word, we've a bit of work to do. So yeah. brilliant. So uh, I'm glad you're sitting in the hot seat today. Yeah. So this probably leads us nicely into what account management tips is all about, mm -hmm. and then your, your service and, yeah. and your business, what you do. So you go in and review the strategy of a company and give them some guidance. So you know, I'm I'm a protect a, a practitioner. So I typically like to, uh, you know, I'm about enablement and getting quick wins and there's a consulting strategic element to what I deliver but a lot of what I find in the world of sales and account management is so theoretical and so academic and it looks great on paper and people build you know empires around you know their sales enablement strategies and their their customer success strategies but actually when it comes down to the day-to-day when you have clients complaining because things are broken you know you've got too many accounts one of your colleagues left and you're now doing all their work as well the reality is you don't really have a lot of time to often implement the things that you would love to do if only you had 
you know, enough freedom and time to do it. And I don't know about you, I don't know how many courses you may have done in your lifetime, but how many of them do you remember? How many of the things are you still implementing years later? How many do you think in your mind, that course changed my life, or that is one tip today I'm still using? There's probably so few of them because you often get back to your desk and throw it all in a drawer and go, yeah, that'd be great, but you know. So Account Manager Tips is really based on that foundation of, okay, what can we do that's going to deliver impact today? that's sustainable and that you can implement and embed in your business and in your team's day-to-day -day activities without increasing the administrative burden um, and you know without making it difficult or challenging but actually getting getting rewards quickly. Amazing. There's so many things there. Yeah. Uh, I've got for 27 questions. Okay. There, yeah. but, but basically, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, it's, it's so hard to actually improve processes without adding more tasks or work to it yeah. and, and sometimes what we're trying to do as well what, what can we cut away yeah. to, to actually make things smoother and better but still deliver a better service to our, our account our, our, yeah. our clients it's not it's not easy to do no. but but again that's where you jump in and you you have yeah. a have an overall strategy absolutely because you know if you want a client you're probably very focused on implementation you're focused on the current project mm -hmm. and okay you're delivering um, you know, an inbound content marketing strategy and you know you've got to deliver so many articles and so many assets and you're focused on the numbers. But what happens after that? Where are you taking it next? How are you going to make sure that you're linked up with your businesses, your customers' strategies and where they want to go and you're not going down this path but they forgot to tell you? Or the person that was driving that whole strategy has left and now you're still going down this path but you've got no idea what else they're thinking about. Or maybe the new person has an agency they like better than you. And now you've got to compete for their attention and their time and make sure that you don't lose your uh, relationship and your partnership because one person's changed um, and the whole dynamics, you know, all over the place. So really account manager tips is about, okay, what are the core elements? You know, there's sort of 10 steps that I've kind of identified around, you know, the client life cycle, how you move people through that cycle and the strategies that are linked up to each of those. So whether that's retention, whether that's just brilliant basics and managing the foundations, whether that's executive sponsorship and building your, you know, your relationship, um, um, you know, contacts and, and the context with which you have those relationships, whether that's around risk management. So let's say it all turns to crap and now it's all hands on deck. Our client's about ready to walk. We've, we've screwed up. How do you claw that back and make sure you don't lose confidence and trust? You know, so all of these elements have underpinning strategies you know, that I've designed and developed to help clients with that. I mean, to help businesses mm -hmm. deliver that to their clients. Amazing. And what would be the standard business that you would work with or the size? Is it from small to giant or, or broad range? I mean, you know, I'm a client agnostic. I'll take anybody. But typically I'm finding small business owners, mm -hmm. startups, because those are uh, businesses that are so focused on execution they don't have time to develop. Often their teams are from... Um, they may not be attracting people with a lot of experience in those fields. You know, if you're a seasoned account manager working for a big blue chip, you know, or a FTSE 100, are you going to leave your job to join a startup when you've got great benefits, you've got a great salary, you've been there forever, you've got a well-recognized name on your CV? Unlikely. So often they're attracting talent from other parts, uh, other industries or other professions. And they can. what's great about those industries is they see the they see the synergies with your past experience and where you want to go. They're not like, oh, I haven't done it before, so you can't be an account manager. They'll go, you know what, you haven't been an account manager, but you know, you've got, you've got kind of the foundations, we'll, we'll, we'll take you along for the ride. But what they're not able to do is focus on the, um, the development of those teams. And often they need mentors. They need people to coach them and to go, what, what do I do in this situation? I've had situations that have happened to me once and I have learned so much from those. An example, like I had, um, I had a client, it was just supposed to be one-on-one, -on -one, you know, called a Jesus meeting, they were like really unhappy. And I get there, there's 30 people all around a desk and they, it was like a lynch mob, all <laughs> going one-on-one-on-one, -on -one -on -one, all trying to tell me this is their problems, this is what was wrong with us, this is what, you know, I learned so much from that interaction. You know, there's so much from that single event that I can share around account management and how to manage those situations when you're ambushed, when your client throws you under the bus, when you're <laughs> facing unexpected, you know, things don't go according to plan. And um, those are the sorts of things that I think uh, small businesses, startups are really responding to. Mm -hmm. Larger customers are more interested in sort of the process and helping refine their already, you know, kind of 
framework around account management. Mm -hmm. they're, they're often they've already got a model, but it's just maybe broken in a few places or they need some tweaking. Amazing. And and is a plan? And you mentioned the plan. And mm -hmm. your, is a plan important then for businesses to follow? Uh, absolutely. I mean, you need to be dynamic enough and agile enough to react, but you need a plan to. I mean, that, that's my opinion, right? Plan. To, what is it? Fail to plan to. Fail to plan, plan to fail. Yeah. So you know, yeah. or uh, plan to work, then work the plan. That sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I'm a big believer that you need to have at least a framework. You need to have. You need to know what you're doing. Like if you arrive at your desk on Monday, do you know what you're doing this Friday? Do you know what you're doing next Friday? Do you know what you're doing towards the end of the week, end of the month? How many clients do you need to visit? What are you supposed to deliver? What have you promised to them? How far along are you on those projects? What's missing? What's at risk of failing? Who have you not communicated with? No news is not good news. You know, who do you need to reach out to and reconnect and engage with? Most people don't have that plan. And you know, people think, oh, it's in my head. I know what I'm doing. I can roll with it. No, you know, our brains can only, have only, only got so much capacity. And um, I mean, I forget that I need milk sometimes, you know? I'm, you know, how am I supposed to remember that I've got to bid you in like September and start to build backwards for, you know, my retention strategy to win that customer and keep them. And there's, and, and there's so many parts even to that. So you have a plan and you write your to do's and then yeah. you've got a hundred to do's and then yeah. so you can prioritize and because you can't do it. You can't do it all. It's no. incredible. And you're not working alone. You know, when you're an account manager, you're the orchid you know, you're the conductor. You know, often account managers aren't responsible for the execution. They're managing all of the moving parts from the client side and also from you know your business's side. So uh, that can be the challenge. So you, you have to manage your stakeholders well, and a plan will really help you do that too. Incredible. Mm. And do you see many uh, mistakes that businesses make when they're, when they're trying to implement plans? Uh, yes. I think what happens is it's on paper. That's it. Mm. So big mistakes is that it just somebody's written it and then it just collects dust. They don't embed that actually. They don't, they don't use a task management system. They don't use collaborative tools. I don't know if you use you know, some project management tools like a Trello or yeah, a Sana. Yeah. Oh. Share that with your client, you know, co-collaborate. Mm -hmm. Give yourself accountability and visibility. Share that with your internal teams that are working with your customer. Create a community or a tribe around your client, uh, you know, and making sure that everybody succeeds. Instead of you being the one person that has written some meeting minutes and then ticking them off a list on a piece of paper on your desk and hoping you're making an impact. Um, so I think, that, yeah, it's usually the execution. A lot of account managers have great mm. ideas, they've made commitments, they know what to do, and then they get to the end of the quarter or at the end of the year, and they can see, oh yeah, we didn't get around to that. Oh yeah, that didn't happen. Oh yeah, that was because so-and-so left. Oh, that's because we didn't get that. You know, it's just excuses. Mm. So I think that's that's what tends to happen. Amazing, excellent. And, and we would not um, normally share our project management mm. tools with our clients, but actually that's an inter interesting, Why not? Uh, yeah, that's interesting is it, is it? It's not uh, industrial espionage. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> What's the secret? You're talking through that anyway. Yeah, yeah sure, and I, yeah. I can imagine the, the, the advantages of that. Actually, they can see that there's work being done at yeah. any time, yeah. as opposed to wondering what's happening with my project. Absolutely. So I'm waiting for the weekly updates, so no, very interesting. Yeah. And, and look, a lot of clients think it's extra work, that, but who reads emails? You know. Even if you read them, you don't, and you, yeah. you deprioritize them, <laughs> and it removes a lot of the communication uh, friction. It's all there in one place. They can upstream it if they want. Their boss just jumps on their desk and say, "What's happening with that project?" Straight away, they log on to Asana or whatever you're using. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Oh, yeah, this is falling behind. Let me call them and see what's happening with that because we're expecting that delivered this week. I see it's been delayed. I look into it. Easy. Saves a lot of work and effort, and it's it's about transparency. And, and inviting your client and you to collaborate together instead of you delivering, you executing, you being told what to do, you know, the ringmaster and the, the, the monkey, you know, it's like, I think a lot of times when you've got a plan and you're executing it in silence behind the screen and your client has no idea what you're doing, all they're doing is barking orders at you or expecting a certain thing to be delivered and they have no visibility to that iceberg, you know, that, or that, the duck under the water, whatever the you know, metaphor is. Yeah, amazing. And and there's loads of technology. You mentioned mm -hmm. a couple of tools there. Now, do you think technology and I'm thinking even onto mm -hmm. social media and all this good stuff yeah. is a asset that the businesses could use, and um, or is it is it a, a hindrance? And I'm thinking again, you know, from project management all the way to uh, 
building building brands mm. that we do. <laughs> yeah. we're, you're building your brand, we're building our brand. And yeah. when I look at your LinkedIn, the, the, the content that you're you're sharing with mm. everyone online is is incredible. Do you think the, these tools are uh, uh, useful then for businesses to, to use? Absolutely. I mean, I, I love the project management tools, not only for my own business as mm. I'm growing it and as I'm trying to get things done. It keeps me focused and I try and... I try and stay focused on on something's going to move the needle every day, and similarly with account management and with any business, you know you should have like okay, it's, what are you going to deliver short, mid, and long? And every week you should be contributing to achieving each of those goals. So if you've got a long-term goal, one little task that's going to get you to that long-term goal. So I think project management tools are fantastic. I love Trello primarily because it's super easy to get up to speed with. It's not terribly complex as a project management tool. Uh, you can have public boards. So, uh, for example, I publish my, um, my editorial calendar and you know, the content that I'm creating for my website, for my blog. Mm. Uh, I invite my um, team to, uh, not my team, my, my subscribers to vote on what they think they want me to write on next. Uh, I publish um, uh, you know, career development boards. I publish strategic account planning templates just there for people to use. So I think it helps me help other people, but it also helps me stay organized and helps me add value. And I think get creative, you know, you don't just have to use a blog post. There's lots of different ways that you can tap into to tools and technology that your customers are using and do that. Incredible. Mm. And then you're using social media a lot now as well. A lot. And mm. you, you find it useful for your brand building? Absolutely. So uh, social media is a bit of a double-edged sword. Mm. So uh, one thing I think you can get, you can fall into the trap of is that instant gratification. You know, and you see the numbers tick up, or oh, 1,000 followers, 2,000 followers, or oh, 50 likes, or oh, 30 retweets, or oh, 4 reshares, um, 10,000 views. But is that actually converting into business? Um, is that goodwill, or is that actually generating money? Mm. And you look at recently with Facebook outage for, you know, however long that was, uh, people freaked out. But, you know, you know that, that, that's saying, build on your own land. So I love social media. I think it is great for social proof. I think it is great to engage and connect with your tribe, with people that are in, interested. It's great to get your message out. But inbound marketing, and it, it should just all lead back to your home on, on the web. So everything goes back to my blog or my website, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Facebook, whether it's LinkedIn. Ultimately, I'm trying to drive traffic. Um, a video strategy can be great because you can rank really easily on video. Mm -hmm. So, a, a keyword. Don't be telling anyone. Oh, shh. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> no, I'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll watch this one. No, sorry. I'm but, yeah, I mean, you have, to, you have to make it work. So, I think you, you definitely have to decide where you want to be. So, my number one mistake was trying to be everywhere. Uh, two is stop spending so much time on it. Uh, schedule out your content. Think about, you know, a th what you want to say and how you want to say it. And then really invest in that funnel that leads back to your website. And, you know, I'm really upping my content creation. And, uh, yeah, I need to get a lot better at video and batching all that. But, yeah, social media, I think, is essential. Amazing. Mm -hmm. your, your response was actually, I think I wrote it for you. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're, we're yeah. on the same page there, without a yeah. doubt. It's amazing how many people don't realise. Send everything back to your home. Because if you're playing on the social media, so, again, I think yeah. we're, we're talking before, 2010, uh, we set up our Facebook page. And... 50,000 followers and it was amazing and it was mm. on fire for years. You post something and, and people would engage with thousands and yeah. thousands of comments. And today, you're lucky if you see three yeah. engagements on anything and uh, anyone that built their business and didn't move yeah. the brand offline back to their home is, is in trouble. Uh, yeah. It's amazing. Like It's an ad network now. It's but it's the same as happening with LinkedIn, or sorry, Instagram. And as we said, LinkedIn was, was amazing a couple of years ago, but it's... Yeah. changing too and who knows what we have in five years <laughs> yeah, you're right I mean uh, Facebook changed their page algorithm and decided to prioritise you know content from family and friends and I think it's a good move for them but I look at my page now I get good engagement but on memes you know and fun posts about why I hate work you know that sort of thing not very strategic getting a bit of awareness engaging the community but are they the right buyers for my audience probably not I don't know um, I, I, you know, the insights is useful, you know, the pixel fires, you get some decent analysis through Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, there's good stuff around the demographics. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's not, it's different. So I think you've got to, you can't just put all your eggs in Facebook oh, basket. Yeah. Um, I love LinkedIn because it's a professional network. I'm already connected to so many people that are 
peers and colleagues and, and um, people that make decisions about purchasing, people that make decisions about uh, you know, the direction of their business. So that's why I really like LinkedIn at the moment. But um, yeah, they're all good, but you know, horses for courses. Incredible, yeah. Mm. And, and I know you've transitioned from tourism related mm -hmm. industries to where you're now. So again, tell us a little bit about that journey, the transition, yeah. and even, even your past industry as well. So my career has been in corporate travel, and like I sort of said earlier in the in the interview, travel. I've had customers from investment banking, from construction, from retail, from FMCG, from media, from medical pharmaceutical. He's been a pharmaceutical king when it came to account management, and you learn so much about why they travel. So it's not about me selling you a hotel room or a flight. It's about what's the impact of you know regulatory things for medical meetings, you know, there's a lot of restrictions around how you sell, what's the graduate intake program for a pharmaceutical company, what's the impact of generic drugs, how does that impact research and development. Those are the things that you start to learn about as an account manager because you're trying to help your client get the most from travel. So it's been an exciting industry because I'm not just talking about travel, I'm talking about all those different industries, I learned so much about them mm -hmm. and how they get their customers and how they grow. And um, so what happened was two years ago, two or three years ago, uh, maybe two years ago, I was really frustrated at not being able to bust out of that box. You know, people, I would go for, for um, jobs and they would say, well, I haven't really got the experience. I'm like, what are you kidding? I've been doing this for 20 years. Oh yeah, but you haven't been in this industry before. And it was just so maddening that they could not see outside that, that little pigeonhole so I began this sort of personal branding um, journey where I, I decided, you know, I can take control of my digital reputation. Mm -hmm. I had a responsibility in terms of helping people see that actually my skills are transferable. So for, that was a real eye opener for me because, you know, I was like, oh, I do a good job. You know, I'm good at my job. That's enough. But actually it isn't in this day and age. And you can actually really control and curate your professional image as much or as little as you want. So my mission was to be, you know, um, Googleable for Warwick Brown. So now I come up on the first page. I didn't come up at all before. Was to establish my um, expertise and my credibility and authority around the account management profession. So I never promote or uh, mention my industry uh, because I feel like I don't. I'm not there to talk about trends in business travel. I'm there to talk about trends in account management and how you can help keep your customers and how you can grow revenue and how you can develop your teams and build career runways for them. I don't, it's industry agnostic, it's universal. So, uh, and from there, the business has been born, the blog has been born, I get 10,000 visitors a month to the website, I've got a few thousand subscribers, my YouTube channel happened. Mm -hmm. So there's all these things that have come as an opportunity yeah. just from dipping toes into this sort of personal branding digital space. Cool. And you probably know that as well with your customers that what, how, you know, your, your strategies have to evolve as you start to get results and you see what works. So yeah. you might think, I'm going all out on Pinterest. Well, it turns out your audience is on LinkedIn, so actually <laughs> shift. Or I'm going to go all out on blogs, but actually maybe start with video first because mm -hmm. that's where you're going to get results. Or mm -hmm. So I've been adapting and letting things go or introducing new things as I've learned about, you know, that space and how it what my clients are looking for. Incredible. You've transitioned then from, from tourism mm -hmm. into uh, your new role. Did mm -hmm. you find the transition? And uh, I'm thinking of other people who are maybe yeah. on a journey of transition mm -hmm. as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you found that easy or hard? Difficult because during the, I mean, I've had a full-time job and, you know, they call it the side hustle, the five to niners. You know, you get home and you're still plugging a few more hours yeah. work to try and, you know, and for some people it's enough just around, you know, a little bit of, supplementary income or just helping them you know pursue a hobby but for me as as I have received so much wonderful feedback and as people have really responded to my content and reached out for help and as I've decided to develop other products and solutions you know I've made the the transition to to something that's you know looks viable but you know proof will be in the pudding but um, I think it takes as long as it takes. Mm -hmm. I think definitely, you know, you do need a bit of a plan and your idea of a plan at the beginning is definitely going to be a different view at the end. So for example, you know, I've got a digital course about, you know, uh, meeting C-level executives and, and building relationships with senior stakeholders. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, if I sell 10 of those a month, 
times you know 200 pounds that's 2000 pounds easy piece of cake mm. but then i think more in terms of okay what's my website traffic what's my conversion rate mm. how many people do i need to and suddenly like oh actually it's not so easy mm. like 10 times 200 sounded easy mm. but based on the traffic i currently had yeah. actually it's more difficult than i thought um, and then I've got to build the funnel and get the people through the funnel and, and have the Facebook ad strategy as well as my landing pages and all that sort of stuff. So suddenly a plan of like, oh, 10 times 50 or whatever, easy, suddenly becomes more complex. Um, so I think, you know, you have to get more focused on revenue. You have to get more focused on your value ladder and how you can have different elements, you know, different, different layers of products at higher price points to help build a, a revenue generating business. And getting clear on your message, I think that's a really difficult thing because you start out going, I just want to get visible. And then you, you're like, okay, well, it's, it, it, I think when you start, it's very self-centered. It's really about you. Mm -hmm. And then for anybody that wants to transition into a business model, you, you have to become much more customer-centric and put the customer first instead of about you getting Facebook likes, about you getting traffic to your website, about you... If you start with the end in mind and start with the value in mind and work backwards, mm -hmm. I think it kind of will really help you with your transition and help you with your plan. Um, and there's two books I would definitely recommend. Mm -hmm. One is Personal Branding by Karen Kang. Okay. And that's not about trying to get Facebook likes. That is about uncovering your values, what matters to you most, and how you can translate that into a message that's going to help you, whether it's your career, whether it's a business. Mm -hmm. What I really liked about it particularly if you're currently employed, sometimes there comes a point where you and your values no longer align, like your, your the business you work for is a values and yours have diverged. And that's just time, things happen, but you know, she get, helps you get really clear on pinpointing that and thinking about your unique value amongst sort of your where you're at. And the other one is Pivot by Jenny Blake. So that's another really good book about people that are looking for a new role or a new opportunity, but they go so wild and wacky and crazy about what they want to do. You know, it's like, okay, like I'm a data scientist, but you know, I want to be a piano teacher tomorrow. You're like, well, is that really going to happen? <laughs> Versus pivoting, which is like, okay, well, I'm here. I want to be, um, you know, I'm a data analyst, but maybe I could move into like investment banking as a, or, or, or moving, you know, it's just that 45 degree pivot. It's like not going 180, but finding some, some common, common, threads in your experience that's going to help you leverage that to the next role so that's another good book amazing excellent mm -hmm. and what what's the the future then i'm thinking what, what's next for yourself and, and your brand what's the next couple of years look like so for me i've spent the last two years really focused on content really getting crystal clear on who my audience is what they're looking for from me and how i can help them so i've got a pretty good handle on that for me the next steps are scaling that so I really need to start to look at outsourcing. I can't continue to do everything myself. And that might just be virtual assistant or getting some, some support on Upwork or freelance or something. But there's some things that take a lot of time that I need to get help with. And then building that value ladder. So I have some consulting, coaching and online education um, solutions. Mm -hmm. I want to evolve those further and get more, um, more clear on, on what that looks like. And then it's really about selling. Yeah. yeah getting on the phone, hustling, introducing myself. I've got the, the, the engagement and the content marketing, the inbound strategy yeah. right, yeah. but you can't just go, that's it. No. Build it and they will come. Mm -hmm. It doesn't kind of work like that. You still have to Close the generate deal. leads, yeah. get that Close business through the door. I don't want to, again, mm. as I say, your, your content marketing strategy, mm. what, what you're doing actually, uh, uh, shone a light to ourselves. Yeah. We've seen a, a common path and uh, you're sharing your expertise mm. online, which is incredible. So again, it's, it's definitely working you know it, it really does uh, make such a difference when you see people are actually putting out content and, and helping educate people uh, yeah. it does it does work it really does work doesn't it but um, I think any patience too I mean I've seen I mean I have a blog post it takes six months mm -hmm. you know I'll get 50 50 views a week and then suddenly it goes to 800 yeah. but that's because I'm building my domain authority I'm building credibility I've maybe tweaked some of the keywords or I've got sort of other pages with internal links building up to that so i think that's also the thing that a lot of people lack is they want instant results and i think you do have to invest in your strategy when it comes to marketing and when it comes to to online it's amazing and again we have so many clients that have given up 
you did to go for two or three or four months and it and didn't it's work. Not working. <laughs> yeah, it didn't work in Gimel. Uh, I, I mean, knew it. I knew it wasn't going to work. Uh, yeah. that's, and that, that's yeah. exactly the mindset. And again, just just uh, last question. Then. So you're you're clearly very very knowledgeable about inbound marketing, online marketing, mm -hmm. branding. Mm -hmm. How how come? <laughs> because you, you, I'm a one man show. I've had to develop all of this, and yes. as I've learned, I've gone okay. And my view, like anything, I think you have to have a decent understanding. I'm not saying you have to be an expert, no. but if you have no clue about what you want to do or how how it works, mm -hmm. how the sausage gets made, mm -hmm. then how are you going to know if you're being ripped off? If you're mm -hmm. if the results are good or bad? How are you going to give guidance to the agency or the person that you've hired? I even I mean, there's some things at the moment around you know CFOs, and you know with with um, the, the digital um, economy and all of the technology and artificial intelligence, they're signing off on these massive, huge, trillion, well, not trillion, but million dollar budgets to invest in voice, voice activated technology. Mm -hmm. But they don't even know what it means. You know, so they're literally just signing the check and hoping yeah. that their team knows what they're doing with the money. Mm -hmm. But my view is, particularly with social media and content marketing, you kind of need to know how it, how it works. And then you can go, all right, I'm good at this. I'm not really a writer, but maybe I've got a good sense for the visuals or I'm good at community engagement. Maybe I'll hang on to this little bit and outsource that and I can give some good direction. But I think, you know, especially for a, a, an entrepreneur or a small business, you need to get a good grip on it. Very good. And look, it clearly it's working. Yeah. Like, as I say, I'm very impressed with whatever you're doing. I can't believe it's, yeah. you're doing as, as much as you are. It's uh, incredible. So no, it's, it's really, yeah. really good. I think you, ha you definitely have the... There's also that shiny new object syndrome, and I think one of the challenges for any business when you've got a small group of people that are multitasking across different functions mm -hmm. is okay. You know, jack of all trades, master of none. Yeah. You know, there's a bit of that, yeah. and you know, I've spent a lot of time trying to do, you know, photoshopping my, you know, my banner ads. Really, I should be writing content, or I should be getting on the phone trying to drive sales, um, and then you have that. I don't have enough money to pay somebody. Yeah. But then my time is worth money. So where's where's the tipping point? So um, yeah, I think it's interesting. I think it's great. To have, it's great and it's fun. No, I enjoy it too. I love the challenge yeah. and seeing the results. And again, no, exactly as you're saying, that's why we instead of being a broad marketing agency, we're mm. really focused on content and content creation. And that's where, our, as you say, you find your home yeah. and your specialism, and and you double down on it and uh, make it work. So very interesting. So if anyone watching this would like to talk to you more, find out about account management mm -hmm. or anything, or even just to follow or engage with your, your tips and advice that you yeah. share online, where's the best place for them to go? So um, accountmanager.tips is my website. Mm -hmm. They can tag me on social, hashtag amtips, that's everywhere. And uh, I do hang around LinkedIn and Twitter a lot as well. Excellent. Well, again, thank you very much for coming in today. really enjoyed our, our conversation. So. Same, likewise. Brilliant, excellent. And thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed today's chat and you learned loads and loads. Make sure you check the links under, underneath this video and uh, visit all the sites and check out AM Tips, uh, the hashtag, and you will be impressed. And uh, that's us for today. So this is Kieran from Profile 3. We're the content marketing agency here in the Springfield Road in Belfast. And we'll see you in tomorrow's video. Thank you again. Bye.